Nepal has been hit by many mega earthquakes. We cannot avoid earthquakes in Nepal. The most recent ones were on April 25, 2015 of magnitude 7.8 on Richter scale and on May 12, 2015 measuring 7.3 on Richter scale. In Nepal and the neighboring countries in the last few decades, tens of thousands of lives have been lost and hundreds of thousands of houses destroyed in earthquakes causing a lot of undue hardship. The death and destruction that these earthquakes resulted in are grim reminders of the weak houses that we have been building in our country. The major reason behind the death and destruction due to the earthquakes is not the materials used in making them, such as stones and mud, but it is the poor quality of construction and absence of earthquake-resisting features, such as bands. The only way to reduce the impact in the face of future earthquakes is to build new houses using affordable earthquake-resistant technologies. There are many such technologies available approved by the government. One such technology is the Containment Reinforcement Technology, or CR technology. CR technology was approved by Nepal government for the reconstruction of up to two and a half story houses of stone masonry in mud mortar. It uses galvanized iron wire and weld wire mesh to make earthquake resisting features. It does not need cement or steel bars for the making of houses earthquake resistant. But there are hundreds of thousands of existing houses constructed of stones or bricks and mud mortar without earthquake resisting features. They are extremely weak and cannot survive in future earthquakes. To reduce death and destruction in future earthquakes, we must retrofit these houses to help them withstand the earthquake shaking. You may ask why retrofit? Why not demolish and rebuild? Because rebuilding costs five times the cost of retrofitting the house. Rebuilding takes three to five times longer than retrofitting. Retrofitting has much smaller carbon footprint than reconstruction. In this video, we will discuss how existing weak houses can be retrofitted affordably using simple technology. Local masons can easily implement the technology using simple tools. CR variant system can be used for retrofitting of these vulnerable houses using weld wire mesh, wires and very little cement and sand. We can retrofit these stone masonry houses by tying all walls together, tying the floor and roof to walls and tying masonry with containment wires vertically and horizontally so the house acts as a box. Such retrofitted houses can survive the future earthquakes. But how can we be sure that the retrofitting by CR variant system will make houses safer? Should we wait for the next earthquake? No. We do not have to wait for the next big earthquake to know how safe the house is. Scientists can test safety of buildings in laboratory using machines. Shock table is one such machine to test safety of the house, where houses are built on the table for testing. We will demonstrate effectiveness of retrofitting by simultaneously shaking of two houses, one retrofitted and another not retrofitted, and comparing the damage suffered by them. This shock table has basically three components. One is a two-ton hammer that hits the table. This table is based on impulse load. So here is a two-ton hammer which hits the table and forces table to move forward because this table is mounted on wheels. As you can see wheels and at the back of this table, there are springs. So the moment table hits the springs, the table bounces back. So basically with help of this hammer and the springs, we are creating back and forth motion or during earthquake setting. So basically what we do is we construct the buildings or the houses on the table. So when table shakes back and forth, the building also get the back and forth shaking. 
Accelerometers attached to the models at different levels record the intensity of shaking. The intensity of shaking is recorded by a data recording instrument. For testing, we have constructed two half-size house models on the table. We have constructed both houses the way people construct their houses in Nepal. The houses have been constructed of stone masonry in mud mortar by local masons. The roof of the house is constructed of slates and CGI sheets supported on timber structure. Both the models have attic floor of timber. We have not installed any earthquake resisting features such as band in both the houses. To show how retrofitting makes the house earthquake resistant, we have retrofitted this house after it was built to reduce its vulnerability. As the stone masonry gables are the first to topple during an earthquake, we have replaced the stone gable with a lightweight flexible gable. To tie all the walls together, seismic bandages have been installed at lintel level on both faces of the walls. The bandages consist of weld wire mesh and bars. These are encased in 1 is to 3 cement sand mortar. We have also installed a RC band at the eaves level. Band will tie the walls together and avoid falling of stones from the top. To prevent cracking at door, window corners, we have also encased the doors and window with weld wire mesh on the outside face of the wall. The weld wire mesh is encased in 1 is to 3 cement sand mortar. Wire mesh also has been installed at model corners. Retrofitting measures also consist of vertical and horizontal containment wires placed on both surfaces of the walls. These help to hold together the stones in the masonry. To understand its working, see what happens to this stack of stones when shaken. Now, if it is tied with a string from top to bottom, and if you shake, then nothing happens to it. All retrofitting elements such as bandages, encasement mesh, corner mesh, and containment wires are securely tied to the walls with crosslinks. The cross links are made of 2 mm diameter galvanized iron wire. They are installed by drilling holes through the wall at appropriate locations. Cross links are inserted in the holes. In the floor, the floor joists and the beams are anchored to the walls. In the roof, the rafters and the beams are also anchored to the wall. And underneath the roof, the diagonal bracings are installed for improved diaphragm action. In the roof, uh, the roofing, uh, which is slate, is also anchored to the rafters and all the connections of rafters with the beams have also been strengthened using galvanized iron wires. But this model is left the way it was built to study its performance against the retrofitted model. The table is given shocks starting with a mild shock and gradually increasing the intensity of shocks by increasing the inclination of the pendulum.
After each shock, the damage to both the models was documented. With increasing shocks, the level and the extent of damage in the non-retrofitted model increased rapidly, but the damage level in the retrofitted model remained low and limited. The sixth shock caused grade 3 cracks in the non-retrofitted model. In the seventh shock, those cracks in non-retrofitted model widened. In the eighth shock, the inside face of the west wall of unretrofitted model separated and collapsed, resulting in grade 4 damage. Cracks in the corners of unretrofitted model reach grade 4 damage level. In the retrofitted model, the damage in the corners remained at grade 2 level cracks. In Impact 9, all four corners of the non-retrofitted model collapsed. In the retrofitted model, the damage in the corners remained at grade 2 level cracks. In this test, the pendulum was taken to maximum 35 degrees inclination. In impact number 10, in the non-retrofitted model, the severely weakened west wall buckled and the model totally collapsed. This is grade 5 level damage. In the retrofitted model, the damage level in masonry remained at grade 2. Fine cracks were observed in the seismic belts and opening encasement. See, with the collapse of the non-retrofitted model. Uh, thus far, uh, the test has clearly replicated the kind of damage that we observe after an earthquake. The vulnerability of the traditional stone and mud model is clearly evident from this test. The seismic resistance of the model retrofitted with the CR variant has been validated in the test thus far. We saw the uh, damage and then eventual collapse of the traditional building model, which was constructed without any earthquake resistant feature. And the kind of failure patterns which we notice after an earthquake was clearly evident in this traditional model. So obviously the uh, traditional model is vulnerable and it needs retrofitting. After each impact, the retrofitted model has shown a reduction in stiffness and it has dissipated the energy ever so subtle in an ever so subtle manner and it has not lost its strength you can you can find some amount of damage but it has not lost its performance the band continues to perform the corner band also continues to perform in fact today 
we removed every alternate vertical and horizontal containment reinforcement wires and imparted uh, two more shocks yet it still performed in a beautiful manner in a, in a per perfect manner the seismic resistance uh, performance of the retrofitted model is completely validated in all aspects one of the common question which raises which is raised by any person who sees this uh, shock table test is that does it relate to an earthquake test or a seismic uh, test and does it relate to a richter scale magnitude so to that extent we were also able to scale at scale the shock table test to the to an intensity of uh, 8 so richter scale uh, is not a good measure of finding out the damage potential of the earthquakes and shock table tests are not meant to uh, replicate the uh, magnitude of the earthquake we are looking at the damage potential and the damage causing abilities of an earthquake we can raise uh, the acceleration to any level we want in a shock table test in fact our records have shown that the accelerations are far more beyond the gorkha earthquake uh, which the uh, retrofitted model has uh, withstood okay of course the unretrofitted model has failed the cr variant method can easily be used to retrofit two and a half story masonry houses built in mud mortar commonly found in nepal the experiment has proved is the the method we proposed for retrofitting of traditional stone masonry building is a valid method to retrofit existing stone masonry buildings and retrofitting in my opinion is the simplest easiest and most cost effective way to reduce seismic risk of these buildings or any building retrofitting of these traditional buildings can be achieved in one third to one fifth cost of a new building new similar size new house other thing while retrofitting we don't have to remove all the convenience in the house they remain there and we can still retrofit the house other benefit of retrofitting is we don't have to vacate house we can still live in the house and house can be retrofitted and typically it takes four to six weeks to retrofit this size of house so in my opinion retrofitting is the best option to reduce seismic risk of existing building not only that these re these houses requires minimal importation of cement and steel from outside that means the 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 money doesn't go out from the community or village it remains in the village so that it helps to promote local economy and this can be implemented with minimal training to engineers and local masons so it's very easy not only that because it requires a minimal amount of uh, cement and steel that means it contributes very little to uh, greenhouse gas it leaves very little carbon footprint so what i suggest everybody to retrofit start retrofitting your house today to protect you yourself and your family from the impending earthquake don't wait for another earthquake which could be catastrophic to you and your family